Please join me in welcoming a leader and a fighter for the Commonwealth, Attorney General Martha Coquit. I am delighted to be here, and I, uh, first of all, think Brockton rocks, R-O-C-K-S, right? It is terrific to work with the mayor and with Representative Brady. Uh, and I have to give another shout-out to Chris Cooney, because I was just down in Brockton, spoke with them. You seem to be the fix-it guy for everything down there, and that's great, a great partnership in your community. Because um, I called Mayor Belzotti and said, we um, need some space because we're trying to implement our mortgage settlement and we want to have some mo loan modification specialists around the state. She said, well, let me talk to Chris. And of course, uh, as he always did, he came through. So we appreciate that. And the, it's, it, it, to me, indicates a community that really cares about educating your kids, making sure that we keep people in their homes and we keep everybody safe. And I, I appreciate that. And the work that you did is extraordinary. And I will say, uh, many of you know that as I grew up in North Adams, so did Rick. Uh, he was a few years behind me, but we went through St. Joseph's School, North Adams, with the sisters of St. Joseph, and we had a plan, too. It was do your homework or you get your knuckles on the blackboard. <laughs> but Rick and I did okay. We survived that, and we were able to make that work. Jay, thank you for that introduction, and thank you for the work that we've been able to do with you and with Andrew around this incredibly important issue for Massachusetts, and I want to talk about that today. Um, I also... Would love to take questions and comments if we have time, but we'll see. I know we're running a little bit late. Um, I'm recalling the time I, my dad uh, had me come speak to his Rotary Club, and I said, Dad, how long should I talk? He said, you can talk as long as you want, but we all leave at 1 o'clock. <laughs> and we're, we're well past that time uh, now. But I also know it's Friday, and, and um, I uh, know that a lecture is a long answer to a question nobody asked, and so if we have time. But there are a couple of things that I want to talk about, and very quickly about my dad, uh, a good friend of Rick's. Uh, we grew up in a small city where we did know everybody. We walked to school. My dad had his own insurance company. He was very much involved in his chamber of commerce and later as on the board of incorporators of the Hoosick Savings Bank in a time when um, he did go to look at all the properties before they, they gave a mortgage on them. And the kinds of integrity and ethics that I know was shared by uh, Rick's dad that we grew up with uh, was important to me in the kinds of career uh, choices that I would make as an attorney. You're starting behind the eight ball, obviously, right, as a, going to law school. Um, but it was important that that sense of his commitment to community that I see exemplified by the work that you did with the schools, which is fabulous, which, by the way, every single community in Massachusetts could do. It's not about fancy technology. It's not about the new. It's about hard work, as you said, and, and making sure that everybody has the same mission. And so I congratulate you for that, and I hope that we can spread that uh, story. Um, AIM, of course, has a similar kind of mission in working together in a tough economy as you have your own individual businesses um, and concerns. You also work together incredibly uh, cooperatively. And I, I wanted to talk today about two areas where for most of you uh, in the room, um, you are not businesses, but you are consumers. You are consumers of health care. You are consumers of energy. And I wanted to talk uh, about where we see that going and also open up, as I always do, the importance of the dialogue with our office and our staff on those issues uh, in a way to say, as Massachusetts is much uh, farther ahead of many states on both of these issues, we still could do better, and we still have a lot of work that we can do around them. To that end, when I first came in as Attorney General, I started a small division called Business, Technology, and Economic Development. It's affectionately called BTED in our office. And it is unique still to my uh, experience, both in Massachusetts and among my colleagues around the country. It was important for me, given my experience uh, with, with my dad, for instance, and his business in the community and the ways in which I understand uh, that government isn't something separate and apart from everything else in the community, it's integral to it, that it was important for me as the Attorney General to have a place in the office that uh, would be an ear for businesses, that you would have a place to go talk to about concerns you had about what we were doing uh, or what we weren't doing, and that you also would have a place in my office that would be a voice for you. And it started out in the way that we would look at regulations or actions we were taking, but it's grown a little bit since then. And I see our BTED as a way that we can also have a communication with you about the ways that we can maximize opportunities to do better, 
to turn the economy around, to promote a healthy economy in Massachusetts, and to help your businesses do better, um, for instance, in making sure that our students are well prepared for the jobs that they need to do. And I came home from a meeting in New York this morning. I left early because I wanted to be here for today's luncheon. But I spent yesterday afternoon with m several of my colleagues from around the country, across the table from the national CEOs of um, Verizon and um, Sprint and AT&T. And we talked a lot about the relationship between their businesses and attorneys general around regulation. But I also said to them, how can we do better? For instance, around helping us train uh, on cybercrime issues. How can we develop better protocol to keep our kids safe if somebody's missing? But I also said, how can we do better by you having conversations with us, uh, with our governors, with our schools, about the very things that I think are important to you and why you get this award. Because we want to train our kids to read and write and speak well, to be good citizens, but also to be prepared for the jobs of the future. And when we talk with you about what you need, what's the skill set you need, why are we not seeing that and doing that, there's a lot that government and industry can do together, not on two sides of the room trying to avoid regulation or lawsuits, that there are some things on which we will not uh, agree. But I would like to see us as a way in which we can further those goals that we both have in common, is making sure our kids are skilled and they're prepared to move forward and that we maximize those opportunities here in Massachusetts. Um, many of you I know have met and worked with Brooke Thompson, who's here today. Brooke, would you stand and wave? And she has cards with her. And I hope that you would call upon her if you think there's something we can help with, you have an idea that you want to vet. Uh, we have a bully pulpit, and we like to see on this idea, for instance, of making sure that veterans are prepared to work. We've done a lot of work with individual companies around how can we get our veterans back to work? How can we get people returning to the workforce, moms or dads who've been out of work, who need the skill set? Why did we... Uh, get rid of so many of our Vogue Tech schools in Massachusetts where there are so many kids who want to work and they want a job uh, and they may not want to learn Shakespeare and, and that's fine. Uh, but we should be giving them the education that will give them the skills that you need. Uh, and, and actually the, the three major telecom communities said to me they have trouble filling entry level positions around the country. They do not have kids who have the discipline or the reading skills or the math skills. So you've got an excellent idea uh, and uh, everybody should get back to basics and make sure that we can do this. And I hope that you will see our office as a resource going forward on the kinds of things that you see you need to do better in your communities, with your schools, uh, with your other elected officials, and that we can be helpful on that.